First tonight, we're looking at the reality of working in children's social care as the cost of living crisis sees more and more families needing support. Now, social workers have often faced criticism after high-profile cases like that of Star Hobson in Bradford, who was murdered by her mother's partner. Some councils in Yorkshire are really struggling to recruit enough social workers at a time of growing pressure on children's services. Take a look at some of these figures, because latest government figures show that around 3,000 children's social workers employed across Yorkshire by our local authorities. However, our councils say there are over 500 social worker posts vacant, so this means there's a vacancy rate of one in six. Our social affairs correspondent, Emma Glasby, has been given access to children's social care staff in North Yorkshire. It's scary for people to think that they might need a social worker one day because we're all one or two paychecks away from being homeless. We're all one or two crises away from spending time in hospital with a mental health breakdown. And that doesn't make you a bad person. It doesn't mean that you plan to do it, but someone's got to be there to, to pick up the pieces and help you get back on track. And those are the social workers. Jess has been a social worker for 16 years. She works in children's social care in North Yorkshire and has never been busier. We're seeing a lot of young people who are really struggling with their emotional health. Um, they might be presenting to hospitals saying that they're feeling very unwell or um, they've taken an overdose. There will never be a day that we don't have an emergency. Social workers have often been criticised. Recently, the murders of Star Hobson and Arthur Labinio Hughes by their step-parents led to more social workers facing abuse. I think it's really scary for either newly qualified social workers or people in the middle of uni degrees thinking, oh my gosh, what if I go to work and one day my name is, is all over the, the Daily Mail, for example. Every social worker I've met, they've always wanted to go in and do the best that they can. And I think some of the representation in the media is, is unfair and out of context. I've often been sworn at. Colleagues of mine have been assaulted. I think if more people knew that the length social workers are willing to go to and, and what social workers generally put up with on a day-to-day -day basis, but still willing to turn up and go to work the next day and try and help and make things better, I think that would do a lot for um, improving the, the views of social work. Johnny also works for children's social care in North Yorkshire. He grew up in the care system himself. So this is a typical room that we might use to meet with families. Parents might come and see their children if their children are, are in foster care. They might come here and spend time together. I've worked in children's services for 18 years and I know that I've changed people's lives. I know that I've helped keep children safe or helped families when they've really been struggling. It's a polar opposite to how people think social workers spend their time. Johnny is based over on the Yorkshire coast, a huge area with many challenges. Scarborough is such a lovely town. You would be able to come here and, and experience the beach and the seafront and the, the arcades. But the bits that people won't see is the areas of significant social deprivation. Now, as families struggle with the rising cost of living, all those working in children's social care are braced for demand to surge. It's quite scary to be a social worker currently. We're coming into winter, we're coming into a time where people won't have the money to, to pay for food. They're considering do they eat or do their children eat? And as a social worker, that, that sometimes falls to us to fill those, fill those gaps. All of those things that boil down to what we call the cost of living crisis is going to hit the poorest families the most. And what that does lead to is an increase in substance misuse, emotional health suffering. They're the byproduct of this situation, so we're really worried about what the future holds. As you heard there, demand is high because of the cost of living crisis. Lisa Zaronika is from the social care charity Frontline. I asked her how concerned she was about the shortage of social workers. Currently, we have one in four children living in poverty um, and the implications of that for children in need is huge. So we really need to be able to be in a place to get out there and support as many families as we can. But unfortunately, sometimes the negative um, view of social workers and perception of social workers means that families are worried about letting us in and, and being open about what's going on for them and the challenges that they're facing. 
as you said, demand is high, but recruitment is really low. Uh, what do you put the lack of people wanting to go into social care down to? Um, I, I wonder if it's the same, the, the, the kind of the perception of social work as, as a profession, one in which it is, you know, it is a challenging profession emotionally, psychologically. It is, um, it, is, it is a struggle sometimes, but it's also a hugely rewarding and important profession to be part of. Um, and I think that sometimes maybe some of the negative media portrayals we hear of, um, and the stories that we hear of, of tragic um, tragic incidents with children dying impacts whether people feel like that's a profession that they can go into and, and do well in. How do we change perception then and how do we make it so more people do want to go into the profession? Well, I think, you know, pieces like this are really helpful. Um, what we know is that 45% of um, the population get their view of the of social work profession from the media. So the more that we can get out messages of, of the good work that we do, we work with over 700,000 children in need, and many of the outcomes for those children are, are, are really positive ones, um, and many families are welcoming of, of social work intervention. So the more that we can get that narrative out, I think, the, the greater um, impact we'll be able to have. Lisa Zaronika, thank you. Thank you. Next tonight, businesses, rail experts and politicians are giving their reaction to the news that a new high-speed rail line for the north will stop at Bradford. The Prime Minister Liz Truss said yesterday the route between Liverpool and Hull would go ahead despite the fact it was scrapped only last year.